St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Burnaby, British Columbia, for the return of her children to their faith and for special intentions. The second are Ian and Nora Hunter from St. Thomas, Ontario, in memory of James and Margaret Hunter. The third are anonymous donors from Mississauga, Ontario, for the living and deceased members of their family, especially their parents and grandparents, for the return of family members to their faith, for peace, reconciliation, and the thanksgiving for blessings received. Our thanks to our donors for this gift of the Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, who made the priest St. John Vianney wonderful in his pastoral zeal, grant we pray that through his intercession and example, we may in charity win brothers and sisters for Christ and attain with them eternal glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. At the beginning of the reign of King Zedekiah of Judah, in the fifth month of the fourth year, the prophet Hananiah, son of Azur from Gibeon, spoke to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two years I will bring back to this place all the vessels of the Lord's house, which King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon took away from this place and carried to Babylon. I will also bring back to this place King Jeconiah, son of Jeokim of Judah, and all the exiles from Judah who went to Babylon, says the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies his peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Then the prophet Hananiah took the yoke from the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it. And Hananiah spoke in the presence of the people saying, thus says the Lord, this is how I will break the yoke of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon from the neck of all the nations within two years. At this, the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Sometime after the prophet Hananiah had broken the yoke from the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Go, tell Hananiah. Thus says the Lord, you have broken wooden bars only to forge iron bars in place of them. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put an iron yoke on the neck of all these nations so that they may serve King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, and they shall indeed serve him. I have even given him the wild animals. 
And the prophet Jeremiah said to the prophet Hananiah, Listen, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, and you made this people trust in a lie. Therefore, thus says the Lord, I am going to send you off the face of the earth. Within the year you will die, because you have spoken rebellion against the Lord. In that same year, in the seventh month, the prophet Hananiah died. The word of the Lord. Teach me your laws, O Lord. Teach me your laws, O Lord. Put false ways far from me, and graciously teach me your law. Do not take the word of truth utterly out of my mouth. For my hope is in your ordinances. Teach me your laws, O Lord. Let those who fear you turn to me, so that they may know your decrees. May my heart be blameless in your statutes, so that I may not be put to shame. Teach me your laws, O Lord. The wicked lie in wait to destroy me, but I consider your decree. I do not turn away from your ordinances, for you have taught me. Teach me your laws, O Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. No one lives on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After the crowd had eaten enough, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and go on ahead to the other side, where he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat battered by the waves was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, Jesus came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, 
and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. After the people of that place recognized him, they sent word throughout the region and brought all who were sick to him and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. I have met many people who feel they are in over their heads these days. Store owners struggling to make sales in a slow economy, parents unable to cope with rebellious teenagers, elderly persons trying to pay rent and buy food with a shrinking pension check, married couples trying to overcome some infidelity and learning to trust again. Modern life is full of deep and stormy waters that can swallow us whole. Thank God for this gospel. In this gospel, we see a weary Christ. He has just spent most of his energy teaching, healing, and feeding a large group of followers. He is overwhelmed by the work and needs some time alone to pray. So he sends his disciples away. They set off in a boat to cross the sea. Sometime early in the morning, Christ decides to join them. So he does something totally unimaginable. He walks out to their boat on the water. Meanwhile, the apostles have had a very rough sail. The wind had been against them, and they had been rowing hard for hours. They were wet, hungry, and bone-weary from the stormy and sleepless night. That's when they spot something coming across the water towards them. They are afraid, and they cry out because they think it is a ghost. Now, have you ever had a day like theirs? A day where you receive the worst possible diagnosis from your doctor, or fighting the panic of being out of work and having no prospects, or your telephone rings in the middle of the night and you hear your son's voice, Mom, Dad, I've been in an accident. Storms like that can come upon us with little warning, and we use up so much energy just trying to stay afloat that we are quickly consumed with fear. It's so dark, we can't see clearly. What do we do next? Who will help us get through this? That's when Jesus speaks his words of comfort. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. When he spoke those words to his frightened disciples, Peter spoke back to him. Remember, it was dark, the wind was howling, sea spray stinging his eyes, only the voice of Jesus was clear. Still, Peter's heart leapt at those words, and with a mixture of bravado and timidity, he says, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And so Jesus says, come. The rest of the apostles stayed in the boat. They had a white-knuckled vice grip on the gunwales, the storm, the waves, the dark, the wind, the uncertainty, they were not about to move. And like most of us, they preferred to cling to whatever little comfort they had. They are paralyzed to stop Peter as he stands up, puts a foot over the side, and steps out into the sea. His eyes are riveted upon Jesus, and he starts to walk on the water towards him. But then he looks down and he sees the waves, he hears the wind, and he begins to sink. He cries out to Jesus, Lord, save me. And Jesus lifts him up with a sustaining hand. Now there is a powerful message in this scene, one we should never forget. As long as Peter looked to Jesus and away from the danger, he was lifted up. But when he looked at the waves and away from Jesus, he sank. There will be times when Jesus commands us to walk on the water, to throw off the comfort zone of the familiar, to venture out into the realm of the impossible and come to him. Unless we have the impulsive audacity of Peter, we will never reach him. Fear is what usually keeps us in our seats clinging to whatever earthly comfort we have, even when Jesus says, come. 
Is your heart heavy with fear and foreboding of what is coming down upon the world? Are you tired of reading some statistics in the papers, seeing the ugly snarl of humanity on the evening news? Have friends disappointed you? Do you look at the world as sinking under a wave after wave of desperation? I know there are times when I feel like that, and when I do, I look away from the TV, the newspapers, the magazines. I stop focusing on my own problems and trials, and I try to restore my faithful gaze at Jesus. If I don't reach out to him in prayer and contemplation, then I am in danger of drowning in my problems and in the world's miseries. In times of despair and fear, we must be very intentional and in looking to God. Spend time reading his word. Spend time in prayer and meditation. Spend time with other believers. All of these things help you to keep your gaze where it ought to be. Only when we look to God will we see any sustaining hope. And all those weary days and dark nights, all those disasters and tragedies which seem so big are impossible to face unless we keep God in sight. When Jesus and Peter got back into the boat, the disciples whispered, Truly, you are the Son of God. And so may we believe as we gaze intently at our Savior, Jesus, who is the Lord of all possibilities. Let us now join our prayers together and ask God to help us to look for Christ in times of trial. That we may be open to Christ and seek out his way, his truth, and his life, we pray to the Lord. That the love of Christ will illuminate our lives and help us to see that he is with us in times of distress, we pray to the Lord. That all people will come to see Christ as the only way through darkness and death, we pray to the Lord. That Christ may strengthen those in our television community and encourage them to ask for his help in times of personal struggle, we pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, strengthen us with your grace and help us to keep our eyes on Christ in times of deepest need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we have received the gifts we offer you with humble, contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Let the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all, his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of blessed John Vianney, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant to us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. John Vianney, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and grant us your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. But of Christ be with Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer to the Holy Spirit? Come. Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. O God, on the first Pentecost, you instructed the hearts of those who believed in you by the light of the Holy Spirit. Under the inspiration of the same Spirit, give us a taste for what is right and true and a continuing sense of his presence and power through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of blessed John Vianney, that we may persevere in integrity, the gift of faith, and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Our thanks to three donors. The first, an anonymous donor from Burnaby, British Columbia. The second are Ian and Nora Hunter from St. Thomas, Ontario. And the third, our anonymous donors from Mississauga, Ontario. And it's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. On behalf of Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Fitzpatrick, Father Lynch, Father Donovan, and all of us here at Daily Mass, we wish you a happy, safe, civic holiday.